Hello, everyone. My name is Steve Nordyke. I'm one of the pastors here at uh, River of Life Church. Welcome to Spirit Wars online class. This is class number three, and um, I'm covering the chapter in the Spirit Wars book entitled, Are You Living in a Haunted House? And it's kind of an interesting uh, title. And what it refers to is that Chris Vallotton had some friends who um, were settling into a new place. They were young people, and they found a cabin that was out in the woods, and uh, the story was that it was haunted. And so they were more broke than they were scared of ghosts, and so they um, checked the house out and moved in. And uh, one day Chris went to visit them. Uh, the story is told in the chapter. And um, boy, he felt something in that room when he went in, and the hair on the back of his neck stood up, and he could certainly tell that something was off. And um, so being a believer and being aware of uh, the supernatural realm, the invisible realm of uh, um, entities, angels, demons, um, those kind of things, he took authority in that room and in that cabin, and he commanded those spirit presences to leave, and, um, and they did. And so there was a marked difference in the feeling and the tone uh, in that cabin after that, and the, the guys uh, recognized that um, something had changed. Well, um, in on that topic, briefly on that topic, people uh, uh, have a belief in ghosts. A lot of people think that they're the spirits of people who have departed from this world and um, mixed in that um, bag, if you will, of a conversation is also a belief, not the same people, but in, in, in the invisible realm of a belief in aliens, uh, believing in life on other planets. And um, the Bible doesn't uh, go into that. Uh, I wouldn't discount that perhaps there could be life on a faraway planet somewhere or whatever. But anyway, I, what I do know from Scripture is this. Um, the spirits of people who die, they, they don't stay here in this world. Uh, they go on to somewhere else, and uh, I believe that uh, encounters that people have with aliens are really encounters they have with uh, invisible um, inhabitants of the unseen realm, the invisible realm, the heavens, and the Bible teaches us that, um, that spirits inhabit uh, the heavens, and uh, so anyway, that's a, a little side discussion, but uh, certainly... Uh, demonic spirits or evil spirits can inhabit a place and uh, do harassment and and do things that um, wouldn't be good. And also uh, masquerade as people that we've loved, who we've lost, and so people get deceived. And that's the enemy's uh, desire is to draw them away. But anyway, that's a side topic and not the topic of this chapter. The topic of this chapter has to do with uh, the question to you, are you living in a haunted house? In other words, are you living um, as though within your house, your body, your being, your mind, there are um, ghosts or spirits or, or um, a battle going on with your thoughts and with your thinking? And um, uh, uh, I'm going to address that here today, uh, especially specifically in the realm or in the topic of the battle or the fight that we do with, um, sometimes we think with ourselves, you know, uh, arguments or, um, or temptations or things that we fall into or failures like that. And, and a lot of people think that, well, um, that's, they have this picture of a good angel and a bad angel and they're, they're fighting, speaking into us and fighting each other. That's not a bad illustration, I don't think. But a lot of people think that, Especially, um, I, I would say a lot of believers think that they're fighting what is referred and termed as the old man, and they have the new man born in Christ, born into the kingdom of God, but they're still fighting the old man. And that's what this chapter um, addresses and, and talks about. And so, um, to begin talking about this, I'm going to turn to Romans chapter 7. And in Romans chapter 7, starting with verse uh, 18... It says this, and if you have a Bible and you, and you can get it out or you have a, a Bible on your phone, pull that up. Romans chapter 7, verse 18. I'm going to read that. For I know, and this is Paul writing, For I know that in me, that is my flesh, 
nothing good dwells. For to will is present with me, but how to perform what is good I do not find. For the good that I will to do, I do not do, but the evil I will not do that I practice. Now if I do what I will not to do, it is no longer I who do it, but sin that dwells in me. I find then a law that evil is present with me, the one who wills to do good. For I delight in the law of God according to the inward man, but I see another law in my members warring against the law of my mind and bringing me into captivity into the law of sin which is in my members. O wretched man that I am, who will deliver me from this body of death? Now, a lot of people read that, a lot of believers, I'll say, when I say people, I mean believers. A lot of believers will read that and they'll say, man, that describes the battle that's going on in me. I want to do good and I want to serve God, but it just seems like the old me is dragging me back and it's back and forth. And they, they cite this scripture as, as evidence that that is normal and that is what happens. But, but um, Chris Valentin, and, and I agree with him, have a different explanation for that. And I want to propose it to you this way by first uh, putting Romans chapter 7 in a context where we find a greater understanding of the battle that's going on. And to do that, we're going to go back to Romans um, chapter 6, uh, starting with verse 1, um, previous to Romans chapter 7, obviously, where he says in uh, Romans 6, 1, What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Certainly not. How shall we who died to sin live any longer in it? Or do you not know that as many of us as were baptized into Christ, we were baptized into his death? Therefore, we were buried with him through baptism into death. And just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. For if we have been united together in the likeness of his death, certainly we also shall be in the likeness of his resurrection. Knowing this, that our old man was crucified with him, that the body of sin might be done away with, that we should no longer be slaves of sin. For he who has died has been freed from sin. Now if we died with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him, knowing that Christ, having been raised from the dead, dies no more. Death no longer has dominion over him. For the death that he died, he died to sin once for all, but the life that he lives, he lives to God. Likewise, you also reckon yourselves to be dead indeed to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Therefore, do not let sin reign in your mortal body, that you should obey its lusts. And do not present your members as instruments of unrighteousness to sin, but present yourself to God as being alive from the dead and your members as instruments of righteousness. For sin shall not have dominion over you, but you are not under the law, but under grace. So here's an explanation for this. He talks in this chapter about being dead to sin and alive unto God and our example being Christ himself, the example of dying and then resurrecting. And so we died and resurrected to the new man, our dead man, our old man being dead. And so if our old man is dead, how can he be alive again? So what we have here in Romans chapter 7 is a contrast with Romans chapter 6. Romans chapter 7 is us under the law, and Romans chapter 6 is us born again, born of the Spirit, and set free. So that's the, that's the situation. Now let me confirm that with you, because at the end of Romans chapter 7, where he talks about that struggle between uh, what I want to do, I don't do, and what I do, I don't want to do, that kind of thing, he says, he ends that in verse 24, O wretched man that I am, who will deliver me from this body of death? He didn't end with that question. He continues on in the next verse with the definitive answer. He says, I thank God. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. That's the answer. Who will deliver me from this body of death? The answer is Jesus Christ, my Lord. If So if we're not fighting the old man because he is dead. Now, uh, will you agree with me that scripture says that the old man is dead? He's been buried. I, I am sure you will if you heard that scripture. Well then, if it isn't the old man we're fighting... Who are we fighting? 
when we when we find ourselves being faced or 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 being confronted with temptation or or situations of temptation, um, we find ourselves um, um, fighting against things we uh, were tempted with in our old life. Um, who shall we blame? Uh, a lot of a lot of us go, oh, that's the old man, and he's resurrecting himself, or he's trying to come back to life. But I want to suggest to you a different enemy. An enemy who masquerades as the old man. An enemy that masquerades as uh, uh, someone who has power over us and he doesn't have power over us. In Ephesians chapter 6 verse 12, Ephesians 6 verse 12, it says we don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but we wrestle against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. So it's not the old man versus the new man. It's the new man versus these unseen enemies, these demonic forces, these spirits from the realm of the enemy who are led by the mind, the lying mind of Satan himself, and they masquerade and they want us to think we're fighting against ourselves, but you're not. You're fighting against principalities and powers and forces of darkness that want to drag you down and put you into a place of defeat. But James chapter 4 verse 7 gives us a formula for fighting that fight. It's very simple and succinct. He says, submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. And I don't know about you, but I have had times where I've had, here's an example, I've had times where thoughts have come out of left field, thoughts that I would never think, not even before I got saved would I have thought those thoughts. Why in the world would I think, why did I think that thought? Why in the world would I consider that that was my thought at all? Instead, we have whisperings to our minds where the battlefield is, where the struggle takes place, that come from dark, invisible spirit entities who tempt us to do that or tempt us to think that or tempt us to embrace something that we know totally isn't of God. <clears throat> and when we uh, are aware of that and when we recognize it completely, we can put a stop to it. And I've had times where a thought has come into my mind and I said, in Jesus' name, get out of here. And my it's like my mind was wiped clean. That thought or that phrase or that idea had to flee Instantly. Now, um, Paul in Romans, he talks about before uh, Romans chapter, um, Romans chapter, uh, uh, beginning of Romans chapter 7, he uses the illustration of a husband and wife. And in the Old um, Testament, in the law, they had r rules and laws for uh, husband and rules for divorce and rules for those things. And he d discusses an example using marriage, but talking about being freed from the law and freed from sin. And he uses the example of marriage and a husband dies and his wife then, it says, is freed from her commitment to him and then marries another <coughs> and now uh, is, is, is uh, um, now under those um, agreements, under that covenant and not under the other covenant. And the contrast he's showing is that there's two covenants. There's an old covenant and there's a new covenant. And under the new covenant, the laws are different. And then he shares this interesting story that I'm just going to read to you. I'm going to share this story to you because I think it illustrates it so clearly about um, uh, the new covenant that we live under. And, and listen to this, if you will. A beautiful young woman married her childhood sweetheart. Immediately after the wedding, her husband revealed himself to her as an angry, mean tyrant. Sitting on the bed on the honeymoon night, he handed her a list of duties and responsibilities that he demanded that she fulfill as his wife. She spent the next ten years trying to comply with all of his rules, but she never could measure up. Then one day her husband dropped dead from a heart attack. A few years later, this wonderful woman married again. This time she married a real prince. He loved her and lavished her with affection. They had an amazing marriage. Well, <clears throat> years passed, and one day she was cleaning out her old hope chest, and she ran across that list from her first husband that he had given her on her honeymoon. 
As she reviewed his demands, anxiety began to fill her heart. Then something remarkable happened. She suddenly realized that all the demands that she could never fulfill when she was married to the mean husband had become the very things that she did naturally for years out of a passion for her prince. And this is precisely what Paul is saying in Romans chapter 7. Under the old law, the struggle to obey, the struggle to meet these demands, they all fell short because we're, we're told in the New Testament, it's made clear in Scripture, that it's impossible for us to obey the law perfectly. But under grace, under Christ, we find that we fulfill those requirements and those elements of love that flow out of our heart, and we do just naturally. <clears throat> it says, Behold, all things have become new when we, when we find that new covenant relationship. Romans 8, 5 and 6 says this, Those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh. Now, oftentimes when we read these passages, we focus on the flesh, and we immediately insert the old man. But let me bring an emphasis to the word minds. Those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh. But those who live according to the Spirit, they set their minds on the things of the Spirit. And so the real key here and the real um, victory here is where we turn our minds. And our minds, again, let me describe, they're the battlefield where the enemy fights his war. So as you begin to fight against those temptations, those lies, those identities that the enemy brings into us and wants us to embrace and believe uh, over the word of God that says we're redeemed and we're the righteousness of God in Christ, begin to fight those things with your spiritual weapons not giving in to an idea that, oh, that's you and that's the old you, but instead that's the enemy who wants to defeat you. It says those who live according to the Spirit, they set their minds on the things of the Spirit. Galatians 2.20 says this, I have been crucified with Christ. It's no longer I who live. So that old man is dead. Quit believing the lie that he's trying to resurrect or that he's alive again. It says... Uh, uh, I, it is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. And the life that I now live, look at here, in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. So this life is no longer a life lived under the old covenant, lived under the laws of the old man, lived under those temptations, but I'm a new man in Christ, and when I'm assaulted with temptation, assaulted with things that are opposed to the things of God, I will take authority over those invisible enemies, and I'll command them in the name of Jesus to go and walk in newness of life. So when I fight these battles against lust or jealousy or anger or unforgiveness, anything contrary to God, I'm not going to let the enemy me distract me from the victory that I have in Christ. And I encourage you today not to do that as well. Let me pray with you. Heavenly Father, I just pray for those who are listening today that you'll move them to a new place of victory, a new place of awareness of who they are in Christ, alive unto God and dead to sin. Father, I just pray for a new awareness of the enemy. Father, not that we'll be obsessed with him, but that we'll be obsessed with you and in love with you, and that in that will flow in freedom and victory, might, and power. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen. Thanks for listening to our online uh, Spirit Wars class. God bless you and have a great day.